Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, everybody. It's Terry. It's Belinda. And we are here today to answer your relationship questions. Uh, we'll be taking some video questions and perhaps a text uh, as well. Nice to be here with you, darling. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, sunny day. Let's uh, let's take our uh, first question uh, from Oliver, uh, and, uh, and then we'll see what we got. Here we go. Hey guys, so I have a specific question for you. I kind of tell you the circumstances of what happened. So my wife had a medical procedure due and the day before, the evening before, she wanted me to come to her to take care of her and that's how she said it. The thing is that shortly before that we had an argument and we did not resolve that argument and it was quite intense. And so to me, it was quite important to get that addressed and get my needs addressed there. And so I went to her on that evening and I asserted myself and I wanted to discuss what has happened. And she was very unhappy with that because she expected me to come and take care of her, as she said. And she wanted me to not engage in any kind of relationship talk like that and she wanted to just kind of chill and relax together and cook and things like that but she did not specify that before i went to her and so we had a huge fight we had a huge argument because our needs were kind of mismatched and she told me that i'm being inconsiderate for the way i behaved and i will admit that i have a history of being emotionally inconsiderate with her and yet i'm also wondering that if she had told me her needs clearly and concisely i'm sure that i would have addressed them and so my question really is am i in the fall for being inconsiderate could i have behaved better is that all my responsibility for what happened or is it also her responsibility for not voicing her needs correctly thank you great question thank you uh, oliver uh, okay uh you want to go first well i guess i'm a little bit confused because it sounded like um his wife did tell him that she wanted him to be with her in preparation for this surgical procedure. But he's saying that they had an earlier fight and he was wanting it to be resolved. And then she felt that wasn't what was she was asking for. But he's saying she didn't make that self make that request clear. Mm -hmm. So I heard from you, Oliver, that she did make it clear. What wasn't clear by the two of you is that you were willing to um, put the fight on the back burner for a day until she could have this procedure and feel connected to you before she goes in. So I see what got left out was a contract between the two of you to postpone processing what had happened earlier so that you two could be together in this moment pre-surgery. You, you know, it's really interesting. We um, have different imaginings about some of the details, uh, but what, we're, what you're saying, I completely 100% agree with. So here's the difference in the way I imagine it. It's so funny. I imagine he's having the procedure you imagine she's having the procedure. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, and I'm not so sure that she was all that explicit uh, coming into the evening. Uh, I do agree that he came into the evening feeling like he needed to clear the air about what had happened previously. And she had a different view of the evening that they were just going to uh, chill. He does say... If I understood that that's what she wanted, I would have given it to her. He also says I have a history of being insensitive to her uh, in, in the past. So, yeah. Um, but here's where I, we're in 100% union. Contract, contract, contract. 
good couples uh, live and breathe uh, contracts. Honey, pass the salt in a minute when I'm done with it. That's a contract. Uh, I would, Oliver, you would have uh, gotten it yourself uh, spared a lot of trouble by saying, I would like to process what happened earlier. And I feel a, a wish need to do that before the medical procedure. Can we do it now? Are you up for it? Uh, and then she could say no or, or yes. So uh, you could have made your needs explicit. And by the way, I wouldn't say needs. I'd say wants. Needs is a demanding word. Uh, you need air and water. You wanted to talk about it. You would have lived without it. Uh, this is what I want to do. How's that work for you? What, what, what do you think? And she could have either signed on or off. Contracts are there to protect you. So if you say to her, I would like to chill after we process this thing, I want to clear the air on. And she said, okay, let's do it. It would be hard for her to turn around and act like a big victim that you didn't meet her needs after she agreed. So the contract is there to protect you. And conversely, uh, you may differ, but I can imagine that she could have been uh, more uh, explicit about saying, I don't want to uh, talk in a deep way. I, I just want to chill tonight. Is that okay with you? Or and, also included how much time they would spend on talking about it. So there was a beginning, a middle, and an end. And at the end, if it's not resolved, an agreement to shelf it until after the procedure. Yeah, that's right. And that principle is that uh, contracts need to be closed-ended. Uh, most couples, when they make a contract, it's too indefinite. We take out the garbage, yeah. Two weeks later, the garbage sold it out. Mm -hmm. Well, I said I take it out. I never said when. So, uh, uh, yes, when you make a contract, make it uh, specific and, and close-ended. But if your partner doesn't make a contract with you, you can help them out by making a contract with them. Hey, listen, this is how I want to spend my night. How, how, do, you, uh, how do you want to do that? You said a few things, Oliver, that, you know, are more historical and aren't possibly are not relevant to this moment. But if, in fact, her perception is, and yours too, that it has been difficult for you to show up for her in a caring way in difficult times, I would think you would want to look at that and what gets in your way of doing that? Because I did hear differently than you. I heard him say it was her medical procedure. I also heard him say that she had already asked to be together before the procedure. She didn't yeah. really, you know, talk about how she wanted to, and that had to be clarified. But that I, if Oliver, you might want to explore what it is that's difficult for you to give to her in vulnerable times. Uh, yeah, uh, all, all, all of the above. Uh, I think we're both in agreement that there wasn't a sufficient contract for the evening. That's what got them both into trouble. And we're, and Oliver says, I've been insensitive in times past, so he might want to uh, uh, look at that. Is that helpful, Oliver? Well, he's not here, oh. so he can't <laughs> Okay. Well, then my question and hope, or it's not a question, I hope the medical procedure went well. And I hope that the two of you found a way to resolve the previous dilemma. And I would also add that couples therapy would probably be helpful for the two of you. Uh, it, it, it's never too late to go back to her and say, I'm sorry. Uh, I could have been clearer with you about negotiating that evening. Uh, I hope you accept my apology. That's gold cool detail. Good. Good? Good. Good. Okay, we have time for, let's see about a text uh, this time, because a lot of people were more comfortable uh, writing in uh, text than sending in videos, and we want to honor that too. Early on in a brand new relationship, how does one establish mutual honesty and transparency with the other person? I find myself often being misled and deceived, and by the time I realize it, I already have feelings for this other person. This leads to disappointment, sadness, and hurt. 
Ah, uh, Aster, you are a sweetheart, whoever you are. Uh, yes, uh, going on, trusting early on, and then being disappointed and hurt. Well, I think trusting is a lovely characteristic. It doesn't mean that you accept everything the person is sharing with you without some inquiry and that possibly she could get more information if there was further inquiry in what the person is presenting so that she wouldn't feel the wool was pulled over her eyes. Yeah, if Aster's a girl. Um, oh. uh, yeah, that, that's right. I mean, we're, we're in total agreement. Aster, hold back. Uh, don't give your heart away so quickly and so uh, readily. Uh, and for her to do an inquiry into herself, what makes it so easy for her mm. to give her heart away? To be so believing so quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, because I, I do uh, have some uh, tough news for you. Uh, when you're in the early dating uh, deal, uh, you're auditioning uh, each other uh, and Aster, uh, this is perfectly uh, normal. What I'm about to say, ready? Uh, people lie. <laughs> <laughs> or they try to be the best part of themselves <laughs> and it takes a lot of effort. So later on in the relationship, they give up efforting like that and more parts of them surface. Yeah. Not always pleasant. Harmony, disharmony, and, and uh, repair. Um, so can I tell a story about our early relationship? Which one about the cigarettes? Yeah. <laughs> yes, dear, you can. Uh, but do you really mean that? Um, yeah, it was funny. Okay. So when we were first dating, what, 40 years ago, uh, we were still both smoking. And uh, uh, we were, you know, it was like three in the morning and we were young lovers and we were lying in bed and we ran out of cigarettes. And we hopped in the car and drove down the Harvard Square to the one store that would still be open. And I grabbed a couple of packs of these uh, killer Indonesian cigarettes that we were doing back then. Mm -hmm. uh, and then true to form, I started talking to the guy behind the counter and I got so engrossed in, in my ADD way with the conversation that uh, I, I got in the car, we uh, were driving back home, uh, the store closed, Just closed, the lights went out as we were driving, and I realized six blocks away that I dumped the cigarettes on the counter. And my young uh, lover... Wanting to, be, wanting to be seen as having characteristics beyond normal. I said... Oh, don't worry, honey. I don't get upset about <laughs> things like that. I'm not that kind I'm of girl. I'm not that type of girl. Yeah. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> She's exactly the type of girl who gets upset by things like that. And my scatterbrain uh, ADD irresponsibility uh, has been an enduring theme in our marriage that and a thorn in my side. Yes, that we've both been clear about uh, and working on, but this is part of my imperfection. Uh, but um, uh, no, uh, me uh, uh, driving off glibly going, oh my God, what a forgiving type. <laughs> uh, yes and no, I think is the uh, more yes. honest answer. Yes. So uh, hold back three months. Three months before you feel like you're going to fall in love. Uh, like most uh, relationship therapists, I'm sure I speak for both of us, don't jump into bed with the person. Don't have sex uh, on your first or second date. Uh, get to know them a little bit. Find out how they handle themselves in a relationship. Ask about previous relationships. See them with their friends. Uh, see them with their family, see them in different contexts, and uh, form your own opinion over time. Uh, they're going to be on good behavior, and you're going to be seeing uh, the relationship through rose-colored glasses in that initial phase. 
all sorts of neurochemicals are coursing through your uh, body and, and take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. And if you're being authentic with this person, you would say the reason why you don't want sexual intimacy right away is because of this pattern and that you will see how able he's going to accept that. If he gets upset, he says it's unrealistic. That will really determine whether the two of you can continue. And I think you have your answer. You know, that this isn't a person that you want to get involved with because when you're telling him your vulnerability, he's dismissing it. Right. So the point is be yourself and see what happens over time. Uh, get over those first uh, glossy uh, dates and uh, do your best to figure out what they're really. Aren't we still in those glossy days? Uh, at times. <laughs> <laughs> we were in five minutes before we got on camera. We will be again. Uh, okay, time for one more? Um, sure, one more. One more? Okay. Hi, both of you. I have been a porn addict for almost 20 years, but only realized a few years ago. I went through a series of treatments with time-limited effect. I hurt my wife, and I ruined my self-esteem, building up an enormous amount of guilt and shame. I'm dedicated to change, and as I work on my recovery, at least I must be transparent to my beloved wife. Any advice for my wife who is getting desperate and ready to leave me? Okay, kiddo, this is your belly whip. Well, <clears throat> I don't want to diagnose anything, but what I can say is you know this is interfering with your marriage. And you know that stopping is important if you're going to salvage this marriage. Stopping doesn't necessarily mean your wife is no longer going to be in pain about this. Her pain can go on for a couple of years. So what I would recommend is that your wife get involved with a program at SLA or, or the sex addiction world that works with partners of sex addicts, porn addicts, etc., and that she do her own work as you're doing your work working with a therapist who understands this dilemma and can help you get into recovery. There is a sequence to it. There are supports to it. And that only in community where the SLA meetings, SA meetings are, etc., will you get the help and support you need to stay sober. I, I, I couldn't agree more. There, there are s &on programs like Al-Anon programs uh, for the partners of, uh, of sex addicts. Uh, porn addiction is a subset of sex addiction. Uh, I believe that you should either be doing uh, harm reduction work with somebody who knows what they're doing, or uh, I might actually prefer SLAA, SAA, Sex Addicts Anonymous, a 12-step program. Maybe a, a rehab if you're really having trouble stopping, uh, a, a more complete 30-day uh, program. Your, your wife, uh, I was saying you can't forgive something that's still going on. So you have to uh, do what you need to do to stay uh, sober, which uh, we're pretty old line. I mean, I'm open to harm reduction, but... Oh, uh, but it doesn't work in this case. Well... Because we, you have to stop to reset uh, the mindset and the neurology of all this. Yeah. So he can break the pattern of going to uh, the pornography to medicate whatever pain he is in. What I make up about all compulsive behavior is that it's always medicating pain. And that stopping the behavior just gives you more access to that pain. And that being in therapy will help you reduce the volume of that pain so you don't have to go back to the compulsive behavior. 
Yeah, I think that's great. And our mentor, Pia Melody, was on to this 50 years ago. Underneath the self-medication is unresolved trauma uh, and relational issues. Gabor Mate has written about that in his uh, uh, book in the Realm of the Hungry Ghost. So do what you need to do to get sober. Uh, I hope your we both hope your wife gets the support she needs, being your the partner of uh, an addict. And then uh, couples counseling. For them to meet with um, somebody, a couples therapist, who also is familiar with this kind of compulsivity. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Somebody who's trained in, uh, in sex addiction uh, work. So... Uh, support for her, sobriety for you, both of you getting flooded with the resources you need for that. And then um, if she's willing, uh, couples therapy with somebody who's both trained in couples work and also in addiction work. Agreed? Agreed. So thank you. I hope you get the help you need. This is, uh, this can be a very slippery slope. So our time's up for today. Yes, I, I'm re really happy that you um, approve of me. <laughs> we will be back <laughs> and look forward to future meetings where we can answer more people's questions. If you're interested, subscribe to this channel and also uh, write comments uh, at, the, at the bottom of this. We'd love to hear from you. Send in more questions, send in videos and uh, we'll we'll keep at this. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Thank honey. you. <laughs> bye everyone. Bye bye.